Tim, I wanted to just do something today that I normally probably wouldn't do uh, and have never done before. So I know a lot of times we just kind of do pictures, me fishing uh, out on the water. But today I wanted to show you, and I talked a lot about this jig that I've been using. Well, I just, uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I just made an order from Southern Pro Tackle. And I got it in today really quick. I ordered it, I think, on... Um, on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, and, and it's here Friday morning. So I want to show you what I got. Uh, kind of a small order, but some good stuff in here. Uh, so you can see I have a lot of pink and chartreuse. I have become a fan of pink and chartreuse, uh, but, but I did do a little something different this time. I normally don't fish curly tails, and I've said that on a couple of my videos, but I wanted to try something different. Uh, because I do know curly tails when I was younger and uh, crappie fishing. I did fish curly tails. I have not fished them a lot uh, since. But I wanted to try something different. So I've been using this color. As you can see, you get actually, this is a pack of 100. Uh, so I've got, I have a lot of these. Next, uh, next fall, winter, and even later this year, man, I'll be able to do a lot of fishing with these. Uh, I ordered a couple versions though. So they have a couple. This one's solid pink. This one's kind of pink and white. And then uh, this one here is still even a little different. So this one has glitter in the tail. This one's no glitter. So I have a, a huge variety. Uh, but one of the other things I wanted to try, and, and Cam, I'm going to give you a shout out because I know you use grubs a lot. You catch a lot of fish using them. So I said, hey, I'm going to try a pink and chartreuse since my pink and chartreuse has been working in the minnow. But I'll try this in a grub uh, just in support of you, Cam, to see how this all is going to work out. Uh, so I got that. Uh, I also, when I was younger, I used to fish a lot of black and chartreuse. So I ordered just a, a couple of these uh, to, to kind of test them out and see if black and chartreuse would do any good for me. Uh, I picked a couple of these. So this is a curly tail, kind of a different version. As you can see, it's got this, uh, the tail kind of splitting in little segments of three. So we'll try those out. I'm going to go back out to the, crop, to the duck pond tomorrow. Uh, if you've seen my videos, I've actually been doing pretty good. Uh, out on the duck pond, so we're going to try that out. So I've ordered that. This is my order, uh, and we'll see how it all works out. I'm hoping to catch another trophy fish. Uh, man, I will say the crappie there have been dynamic. I don't eat them, but if I did, man, it, it would be some nice crappie. Uh, but one thing that's, that happened to me uh, when I went out on Wednesday, man, the channel cat were just unbelievable. I only put one on the video, but I think I, I landed about six maybe and then I had one that just literally snapped my eight pound test line I had it uh, the way I kind of troll is I have my my rod secured behind my my boat seat so if I'm not looking I won't be able to just snatch it out and had two of my longer rods and it literally just snatched it and popped it uh, I landed one that was on the video is about probably I'm gonna guess eight nine pounds I caught one out of there before about the same size uh, but hey we'll see how it works so again southern pro tackle Grizzly Jig Company, if you have not tried them, uh, they have a dynamic assortment. I'm going to try something new and different. Uh, it might work, it might not. Cam, I'll let you know if I'm a, a curly tail believer after this. Uh, but if not, at least I got the, the pink and chartreuse. My wife, who's an AK, would be kind of happy to see that. So we'll see how this all works. Yeah, one of the other things I want to talk to you guys about is uh, I don't do a lot of commentary in my, in my videos. I am kind of a diehard fisherman so when I'm fishing I just like to fish periodically I will, I'll think about it remind myself that this is more than just me catching fish but uh, for some folks who might not be very good crappie fishermen I'm not sure I consider myself one but for some folks who just can't seem to catch crappie uh, I probably ought to at least kind of talk about what we do so if you see in my videos oftentimes I'm going backwards well there's kind of a method to my madness I do a lot of trolling uh, I, I have a pretty decent size Men call the trolling motor, 55 uh, pound thrust. But what I normally do is kind of put it on one or two. As you know, it's a three speed reverse. So I put it on one or two. Uh, if my battery is fully charged, one, as it starts to die, I'll put it on two. Because I try to stay right around that one mile an hour uh, if I could. Sometimes I can't. Uh, and then I kind of crank it up to two. And then I'll, I'll kind of go gear down to one, let that bait fall. But. If you look at where my trolling motor and where my lure is, and I kind of alluded to this in my last video, some people are very hesitant about spooking crappie. Well, 
One, uh, I have been fishing in about nine, ten foot of water. So I got a third, a 42 inch shaft on a, on a trolling motor. So I'm nowhere near where those crappie are hanging out. And Minn Kota makes a very, very good, very quiet trolling motor. So I don't have to worry about spooking fish. But one thing I think uh, you should consider if you're trolling. So your trolling motor will create a weight. And, and if you're trolling and now you have, let's say you have this jig that's in your wake. What will happen with this tail and all this dynamic movement is that current and kind of the wake from the trolling motor will help this jig swim. So it looks a lot more natural in the water. So for those of you guys who, who have not and are not fans of trolling, I, I would just kind of solicit to you, you might want to try it one time or two times, especially when you find crappie school duck. Uh, a lot of people like to jig. I jig. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about kind of what I do and you've seen I think on an earlier video, I, I did kind of an illustration. A lot of people love to jig. I jig, I do. Uh, even though you see me trolling a lot of times, what you don't see sometimes is a short rod off to the side, me just kind of jigging it. But but trolling is really, really good for schooled up crappie. Because now what you have is a schooled crappie and all of a sudden, this thing that looks like a minnow kind of swims right through the school. And, and oftentimes, uh, crappie being very aggressive will just attack it. So I have caught a ton of crappie trolling uh, in fact, uh, out on the Aquaquan River, I often catch fish trolling when other people just aren't catching anything. Uh, not a whole lot to do with my fishing ability, but I think it has to do with those crappie being school, those minnows or what they perceive as minnows swimming through, and, and they just attack it. So if you are not a troller, uh, and a lot of people like to troll off to the sides of their boats, I troll directly behind my boat as I'm backing, uh, lure in the wake, and I've not had a lot of problems spooking fish. So let's talk a little bit about jigging, man. So let's talk a little bit about jigging. Man, I, I have watched guys out on Aquan jig and, and periodically they'll catch fish. They catch quite a few. A lot of guys will use a big motion when they're jigging. Uh, I, I don't, I don't. Uh, I shared with you in one of my segments, a guy named uh, Lewis Jameson who lived across the street from me when I was growing up. Man, that guy was a dynamic crappie fisherman. We grew up in Mississippi. Oftentimes, he'd go out in July, and you, if you've ever been to Mississippi, it's the temperature and the humidity is just miserable. And you'd ask, how the heck is this guy catching crappie in the middle of summer when no one else could do it? Most of us would go catch ours in March and April when they're spawning and schooled up, and we'd be happy. And then we'd kind of say, okay, we'll, we'll fish you know, again in October when it starts to cool off. Well, well, Louis C., what we call him, would go out in the middle of July, and this guy, man, would take just a normal aluminum boat, uh, just a normal kind of stir paddle, never had a trolling motor. That I, well, he did have one, but, but he almost fished exclusively from the front of his aluminum boat doing what we call stir paddling, and, and he would just take one jig, and he would jig it. And, and oftentimes, what you would see is about this much movement, and he would keep that thing still, and he'd just jig it just a little. So for those of you guys, again, who, who don't consider yourselves really good crappie fishermen, if you can locate kind of the depth of crappie, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a minute, but if you can kind of locate the depth of crappie and you know about where the strike zone is, I, I would encourage you not to do this. People catch them, yep, crappie are aggressive and they'll run up and attack it sometimes. But one of the things that you might try is just a, a, a very slight movement. I mean, literally, and you if you watch my hand tomorrow, I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll try to remember to, to illustrate that. If you watch my hand, though, it's barely moving. Uh, so, so you kind of keep it in that same strike zone, and it looks like a minnow that's just kind of skipping through uh, wherever the crop are hanging out. So I would just tell you, if you're one of those guys that's getting about two you know, three foot jerk on your on your jig when you're crappie fishing, that might be precluding you from catching as many as that you know as that you would. Uh, so what I would offer up to you is just very, 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 very subtle movement of those jigs. And sometimes, to be quite honest with you, if you watch me in the boat, I will stop trolling. I will literally just let the jig set at a depth and all of a sudden crappie grab it. Uh, because what they'll do sometimes, they'll just get irritated with something in their presence. They'll look at it for a long time. If you've ever watched some of those videos where they show crappie, they're very inquisitive uh, when they're not really encouraged to strike. So they'll come up and they'll look at it for a long time. Uh, so sometimes if you just leave it there and let it kind of dead uh, drift, uh, they'll attack. It. One thing you'll find out that's almost always true about crappie is that they have a tendency to bite up. 
And what does that mean? So if you are marking them on your fish finder at nine foot, if you're fishing eight and a half, eight foot, and they can see that jig, man, they'll come up and get it. And often the big ones uh, will come up to get it when the smaller ones won't. Uh, you'll see if you see them at nine foot and you're fishing at nine, nine and a half, the smaller ones will go down and grab it. And you'll say, hey, man, why the heck am I catching you know, most of the small ones when everybody else is catching uh, a bunch of big ones? Try fishing above the school with just enough motion for them to see it and for them to be irritated. And, and you might find that the bigger ones will come up out of the school, grab it, and, and then race back down. Uh, a lot of guys fish right kind of level plane with where their school is, and you'll catch them. You certainly will. Uh, if you watch me in, in some of my videos as I'm trolling, if I'm in two, going backward. Uh, if I see a school on, on, the, um, on a fish finder, what I'll do is I'll kind of either go to one or I'll go uh, to off, and I'll let that jig just kind of slowly float down to their strike zone, and they'll catch it a lot of times on the fall. So I hope that this has helped some of you guys who are struggling with you know, putting fish in the boat. Uh, if you see me out on the water and you recognize me, man, I'd love to fish with you. I don't care who you are or where you are. Um, people who fished around me that I've kind of seen and interact with when I'm videoing know that I could care less about how close you fish to me. Uh, just a couple of years ago, I, I was salmon fishing out in the Pacific Northwest and, and we're literally like two feet apart. So if you've ever salmon fished in the Pacific Northwest, you know what it feels like to have people fishing right on top of you. So I am not one of those, unless you're casting in my boat or, or grabbing lures out of my, or jigs out of my boat. I don't care where you fish. So if you see me, I got a marker buoy out and there's a school, man, pull right up, start fishing and let's catch crappie. So if you guys like the video, I'd ask that you like it, uh, provide any comments that you have, any feedback. If there's some things that I've said that you don't agree with, uh, by all means, I'm, I'm good with good or bad comments. And I'd ask you to subscribe. Uh, if you see me out fishing, again, please join me. Until next time, keep your rods bent, your lines tight, and your boat in the water. Take care.